let's cover this chest bra video. Let me turn the music, the sound up so we can, we can hear what's said and we'll, we'll cover a little bit, not the whole thing. Cause it's a 40 minute video or it's only 26 minutes. So let's just, let's just cover parts of it. There we go. And why I don't like, don't Ooh, regret not playing the Fide Grand Swiss this year. So it just finished. If you don't know, did it one, Hikaru finished like uh, second. Let me put the cam up here. There we go. Super strong event, has spots for the candidates. And I've played this tournament once before and haven't been interested in playing since. <laughs> By the way, fun because... fact. Fun fact, when Eric says he played this tournament once before and he hasn't been interested in playing uh, playing since then, it's pretty funny because I'll tell you guys a little story from back then. Because everybody likes to make out there's massive drama. Everybody hates each other all this other stuff. But when Eric did play, I believe in 2017 or 18, whatever the year was, um, at the end of the event, there was an after party. There was an after party that was held at the Chess Bras, um, Chess Bras Airbnb that they had in the Isle of Man. I remember it very well because Magnus was there. Um, I was there. Fabiano, I think, was there hitting on Zhu Wen Jun. Um, and there were some of the Norwegians like Ari and Tari and others. So um, whenever when he has all this drama or all this other stuff, it's just not, not reality. So let's keep going. It is very depressing to play professional chess. So first of all, mm -hmm. it's uh, let's talk about it. There were how many players? Okay. 100, 114, 114 players. players. The vast majority of them were over 2,600. Mm -hmm. Even then, a lot of them are top 100, over 26. Exactly. Yep. Etc. Thank you so much, Balti or GR, for the host with 26 viewers. Thank you so much, Balti or GR. It's 11 it. rounds you. of classical chess held in Isle of Man, and it's mm -hmm. one of the best ways to become poor <laughs> by playing in one of the nicest events on the chess calendar. <laughs> because. First of all, you got to get to Isle of Man. So the question is, I, I, I love this. I, I love what Eric is saying. He's like, yeah, playing this nice professional tournament is one of the easiest ways to be poor, and that is true. Let's look at the basic numbers from the regulations and why I got pretty depressed when I played here. This video will make There's you sleep. Okay, I'll put prizes. on one and a half speed. Let me put on one right. and a half speed. 46 um, prizes, 114 players. You finish in the top 46. Two thousand dollars is uh, I mean, yes, forty six correct. Two thousand bucks, correct. What so basically, in, in the field, there are one hundred fourteen players. The top half get paid. Um, the top half get paid two thousand dollars. Now, I, I assume Eric, since he's showing the regulations, it'll show what the money is as well. But let's keep going. What does a player have? Well, if we go to the regulations, this is one of the nicest events. This and the World Cup are the mm -hmm. two events with like a high prize fund for the average strong grandmaster. You know, the candidates is just a few players. Other One other thing that Eric, I don't know if he's going to say this later or not, but the other important thing to note about this video, when, 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 when Eric is talking about, um, about nice tournaments, it's also one of the very few tournaments where players get money to travel. They get, the, they get like a travel allowance. Most tournaments, you don't even have this. So like, for example, uh, if you were a 2,500 GM who played in the Doha Masters in Qatar, I don't believe there are, are any conditions, which is why one of the people who's done commentary on my channel, um, Alexander Ostrovsky, he went and played there. I think he had to pay for his airfare, and the way that he saved money was by sharing a room with um, with uh, with Hans's buddy um, Josiah Sternman. So basically, um, if you're if you're if you're like a 2,500 GM like in a normal open tournament, you get nothing covered. You're paying it all out of your pocket. Even 2,600, maybe you get half room or full room, but that's, that's it generally. For private events, round robins. So it says right here, travel and accommodation. Because people always ask, do you get paid to go to tournaments, do you get expenses? Well, mm -hmm. this is considered one of the nicest events yes. possible. So each registered player receives accommodation and meals allowance of 150 US for each night spent on Isle of Man, mm -hmm. up to a maximum of 14 nights. And to be clear, for people who are watching this video, this is as good as it gets. Eric is not wrong. This is as good as it gets. Like, you do not normally get these conditions at other tournaments. So when he's saying, like, 150 per night, that is as good as it gets. Can I add subtitles? Sure, I can add subtitles. Travel allowance. And that depends on which country you play for. If you mm -hmm. play for Chess Federation in Europe, you get $950 to get to Isle of Man, right? If you play for somewhere, anywhere outside of Europe, 1600 US. Now, yes. just to break it down, First of all, most of the players who play in this tournament are from Europe, so they get $950. Um, so essentially what they get is, let me open a calculator. Um, they get, they get $950 bucks 
plus uh, 150 times 14. I think Eric already said that, but you get 150 times 14. So that means you get 950 plus 2100. So you're getting $3,050 is the, is the amount of money that you get. $3,050 all in. Um, now, I'm going to assume that getting to Isle of Man from Europe is not easy if you're not from the UK. So probably it's about $500, which essentially means, and that's before, that also, by the way, is before you pay for your hotel. So hotel is generally going to be about 100 a night. So 100 times 14, that's 1,400 plus, five, plus 500, which is about 1,900. So essentially, you are going to make about $1,100 if you're traveling from Europe and you're going to the Isle of Man to plan the tournaments. You're making $1,100, $1,100. Now think about how many tournaments there are throughout the year. And this is as good as it gets. So if you play other open tournaments or whatever you can, you are not getting any of these conditions whatsoever. And so essentially you're going to be, this is like as good as it gets with perfect conditions for like a 25, 50, 2600 GM. And you're going to make a thousand dollars. That's the bottom line. And you still have to eat food. Yeah, I, I guess. Yeah. So if you eat food, let's say 50 times, um, times 14, just 50 bucks, that's $700. Oh, oh my gosh. Wait, seven plus 500 plus 1400. Okay. So when all is said and done, you are going to make about $450 if you don't finish in the top 46. Amazing amazing as they would say uh you're gonna make 450 dollars over two weeks and this is a tournament that has a lot of strong players like there are a lot of very good players who did not make the top 46 and they're making 450 dollars and there aren't even that many of these opens throughout the year so it's not a joke at all not a joke um what the flip exactly so like i don't know actually did Gook, let me go to let me pull up chess results let me see chess dash results let's see um and this is from uh uh what's it chess results isle of man um let me see uh uh what what was chess results grand swiss let, let me see um why are chess players not paid i'll get to that um here we go let's pull this up too okay here are the standings right um wait what why is it not showing show tournament details okay let's look at the ranking list after round number 11 i'll change the scene of course to another one uh, maybe this is better no that's wrong is this better nope um i should have this on uh let me let me find one of my other scenes does this work um yeah maybe this works okay so let's take a look at this okay so what do we have you have number 46 who finished after 46 you have like p show you've got vola keaton matlikoff bluebaum bluebaum for example is a good example because bluebaum is from germany and so bluebaum who finished number 50 he made zero dollars so bluebaum normally if he has a good title tuesday or in, in the two events will make more money than spending two weeks in the isle of man um, just as an example, he, he will make more money than he did from the Isle of Man, where he finished in 50th place. Um, and there's so many players also who, who finished below the top 50, like Hare Krishna, 27-16, David Navarre, 26-89. Um, you've got like Tari, you've got Jordan Van Forest, 2,700 player, Niels Grandilius, Marta Rosing, another 2,700, Digu Kesh as well, though that is India, so it might be different. Um, but I think you guys get the point. So let's get back to it. Um, and where were we? Was it this one? No, wrong scene. Why, why can't I remember which one I which one I set it up on? It was this one. Um, this one. It was not this one. There we go. Okay, so let's get back to the video. Okay, so um, where were we? Here we are. Let's keep going. So yeah, it's very hard. It's very hard. Food is not provided. These just to be clear, you guys. Nothing is provided. Nothing is provided. Hotel is not provided. Airfare is not provided. Um, uh, so hotel airfare and food are not provided they just give you money and you're supposed to take care of it yourself no i don't know some federations might help players but generally speaking if you look at 2600 level players they are not making money that's just the reality chairs and chess boards are provided this is true yes chairs and chairs and chairs and boards and clocks are provided and it's 2023 so flying is a lot more expensive than it used to be there's some inflation there's other shortages whatever but let's just say the travel allowance covers 950 will get you there from europe and mm -hmm. 1600 US will will cover your flight to Isle of Man from many places outside of Europe. Can't speak for everywhere. I can't speak for Australia. Actually, let me take a look. How much? Actually, I mean, I didn't. I didn't go from the US to be fair. Even you know, I, I did like transit, but I am from the US, and um, I think tickets from the US were pretty expensive because the problem with getting to the Isle of Man is that generally you have to go through like London and generally it's not even clear whether you go through Heathrow or you go through Gatwick. So it, 1600 is probably pretty close to how much it's going to cost you. Won't you actually be losing money playing these tournaments on average? Yes. And this is as good as it gets. That's the problem with, with the situation. This is as good as it gets 1100 from Dallas. Yeah. yeah. 
or I don't know about South America, but let's say it approximately does cover your, your costs. Your costs are covered. Mm -hmm. You live in like a federation in Europe that's really far away, I don't know. But let's just say they definitely, that, that should cover it. That's nice. Hotel plus three meals a day for 150 US. That, that should cover it. Isle of Man is not the busiest place. It's not the cheapest because mm -hmm. it's a bit of a tax it's haven. Like the cheapest place, but it's not particularly expensive from, from being there. Isle of Man, by the way, is somewhat expensive because as most people probably know or don't know, the Isle of Man, of course, is a tax haven. I believe there is no income tax for corporations, if I'm not mistaken. So it is not necessarily super cheap either, on the other hand. And of course, even though the pound is deep in the toilet, thanks to the great government of the UK, it still is expensive. 150 nights should cover your hotel room uh, and mm -hmm. three, you know, your meals. It should approximately cover that. So that's fine. Let's just say that's a walk. That's, that's flight. Food, mm -hmm. board, covered for, you know, the players. And again, these are almost all super strong players. Yes. Now, that's not really what matters. I mean, that's good. That's a baseline. But then let's talk about how your professional, you need to actually make money, right? You need currency. So yes. the tournament is 11 games of chess. The schedule, 11 games of chess. And a free day. Yes. So 12, 12 playing days. And if you have to arrive a day before, mm -hmm. leave the day after. I put That's it on one and a half speed, 1.5 1. speed. If you're flying from farther away, mm -hmm. you might add on an additional travel day. So it could right. be 15 to 16 days at the most, 14 mm -hmm. days at the minimum. Yep. If you want to arrive early for jet lag reasons, etc. Yeah, you're looking at 16, maybe 16 days. I mean, to be, to be fair, yeah, like I see someone in chat says Eric can actually create content out of the tournament. He could play the tournament, but the problem is that it's just such a grind. And it's like, why do you want to go there and have to like prepare really hard and still probably struggle? Because like, these are not weak players. These are like 2650 players. Like, it's no joke. I mean, you saw it with like players like Levon Aronian, for example, where like he, he lost a game and then he played another 2650. So like you get no break in this tournament, at least in regular opens. Normally, if you lose a game, you play against somebody who might be like 2500, you get it a quote-unquote easier pairing. Further than that, it's good for you that you're paying your own dime per the regulation. So 14 days, both days budgeted for just playing. Let's just say that's mm -hmm. it, you know. So that's two weeks. And then you take a look at the process. So when you play these tournaments, usually you, you, you play your games of chess. Mm -hmm. The games go up to seven hours a day. But in this time control, I had a seven-hour game. I think there's a game that even went longer. Probably yep. the average game is like three, four hours. But it goes up to seven hours. Mm -hmm. Games are at about 2 to 2.30. So you wake up, you prepare, the pairings are out. You prepare three, four hours on average. Mm -hmm. You get ready for the game. And you play a four or five hour game. Yes. And then that's already 8, 9 p.m. You go for dinner. Mm -hmm. And that's a full day. From morning exactly. until yes. night. It's chess preparation. Going to the venue, chess playing. Then maybe you, you relax a little bit or check your game. Sleep, prepare, rinse and repeat. And you're playing mm -hmm. top players every game. So mm -hmm. full chess immersion. I can tell you on Isle of Man, there's no like partying or big group fun. Very serious event. Okay, so you have your, while you're there, fully occupied. And then before yes. the tournament, players are usually studying and training chess. Mm -hmm. So you budget like, you're probably spending a week or two before the event at home just training chess. True. This is a so react. I'm investment. reacting that's to what this. That's Opportunity cost. <laughs> and then you play this tournament. And for the vast majority of professional players here. He's going to show it, yeah. They're going to come home with nothing. Yep. Even if they play well. You know, I go to final rankings after 11 rounds. Go mm -hmm. to number 46. That's 6 out of 11. So everyone after 46. Yeah. Two-thirds of the field. You, you don't make any money. And you've probably spent about three weeks of your life. And you've been stressful. You're playing full days of chess. Mm -hmm. That's it. You know, there's top 50 players that get nothing. Yep. So Very true. It doesn't really matter, but you're like working hard for three weeks. And you get nothing. We'll mm -hmm. be fine now. says play for the love of the game. How do you pay for the bills with that? <laughs> I was speaking to Aryan about it. <laughs> I, I, lo I, lo I love what Eric says there. It's like, play, just play for the love of the game. Play for the love of the game. But yeah, how do you pay the bills is obviously a very serious question. Like, I mean, it, it's legitimately a serious question. Um, yeah, like, it, it's nice. You said play for the love of the game. But yeah, that doesn't pay the bills, obviously. Um, Friend Aryan Power, Norway's number two. And it's like, for me, it's hard to justify being one of the best in the world. And you don't have government support. How can you actually mm -hmm. sustain yourself if you act, literally make zero dollars for, yes. for three weeks of work? Yes, true. That's not very common in most things. He's right. And the prizes are not that high that it's like, oh, let's say you, I finish 31st to 46. You get $2,000. Mm -hmm. Even $2,000 is for one of the nicest events in chess and you're one of your best tournaments. 
That's not that's not well paid. Yeah. Sir Mike says, don't chess federations pay you to play? No, very few chess federations <laughs> pay you to play. By the way, I've got to pause the video here too. You know, one funny thing, and I, I, I could talk about the Mishra situation as well, to be, to be clear, but it's very funny because actually, um, as I think most people know, my wife is from Iran originally, and it's, it's pretty funny because in a lot of these places, like in Europe or Iran or, or these places like in Asia even, there, there is actually some support for the players. The players do get some support. It was very funny because like, I, I remember the first time that I told my wife that I get like no support from the U.S. Federation. She was very confused, very confused because she was like, wait, like you, you surely the U.S. Chess Federation, there, there must be, you, you, I mean, all the top GMs, like 2,700 plus, they must be getting some support, right? Like she, she basically said this. And I remember the first time that I, that I was talking to her about it. And she was like very confused when I told her that, no, like there is no support. Like Chess Federation doesn't give you any money. You're on your own. You got to make it yourself. Um, whereas like in a lot of Asian countries, also some European countries like Italy specifically, because I know this directly, um, that there, there, there is support from the chess federation or like an Olympic, Fe Olympic committee or Olympic federation, but like where Eric is from, which is obviously Canada or where I'm from, which is the U S there is $0. We get $0, which is why in the U S it's so, so important that, um, that Rex Singfield has supported chess. Cause like up until like 2010, 2011 ish. There was no support. I was a solid 2,700 plus players and, um, and, and I got nothing. I, I got nothing. My, my, I had one sponsor, Red Bull, which paid me uh, some money, something decent. Um, but basically, like, that was it. I had nothing. So um, that's why, like, you know, as a slight segue, it's so, so critical what Rex does for chess in the U.S. So critical. Um, let's keep going. Any, this is an individual event, not a team event. So you're not playing for your country. Mm-hmm. Yalta says, temporary loss for the long term. You've gained a lot of experience, and now you can have a stronger comeback. I'm not talking about kids playing. I'm talking about professional players that have been GMs for 10 years. <laughs> so it's not, you're, you're, you're there. Your experience is, just doesn't pay for, like, these are experienced players. Again, again, this is, this is actually really funny to watch. This, this sounds like, this, this comment sounds exactly like the other one about play chess. You just play for the love of the game. It's like, yeah, just play. You'll get some experience. Like, again, experience doesn't mean anything because it's not going to pay the bills. Just a As a kid, it's event. different. So sometimes you're going to do well, sometimes you're not. Even if you do well. Even if you do well, right? Yeah, uh, we true. We just click on, on some of the events. Number 52. 2683 performance, Azerbaijan. Mm -hmm. 14 points. You don't get anything. So just compare that to... You could teach chess. You could work at McDonald's. You could mm -hmm. be low energy like me and stream. <laughs> you could quit chess. The numbers just don't add up. And this is one of the nicest events in chess. He's right. I'm He's not right. saying they should be paying higher prizes because there needs to be a return on investment for organizers unless the public is funding it. Mm -hmm. But there's not even a minimum prize. And it really right. is one of the hardest events, one of the strongest opens in the history of chess. So it's very hard for me. I, I, it just doesn't like, well, spending three weeks of my life, if you're a really, really good player, if you're like a Fabiano, a top, top GM, Kikaru, you have a decent chance of making the candidates. You have a decent chance of the 60 or 80K you know, top mm -hmm. prizes. And you already make good money in other events. That have guaranteed prizes now prizes. this is where okay. this is where like i'm actually going to do a slight segue before we continue with the video this is where i'm going to pull up a tweet and i've spoke i th i'm going to pull up this tweet very clearly because I, th I think people a fair amount of people have seen this but there's this tweet about hikaru hasn't lost a classical game this year and this this tweet is not actually uh, the reason i bring it up is not about me but it's very specifically when we go down this list you're gonna see a couple of people here, very, actually Anish doesn't matter so much because he has, he has like 15 wins. But when you look at Wesley So here, he has won seven games, drawn 56 games and lost two games in the 2023 year. Now, the reason that I bring this up or why I segue into this very briefly and why it's so important and what I, why I think chess is somewhat broken is because for someone like Wesley So, the goal, the, the overarching goal for players who make the Grand Chess Tour is not to lose rating points as opposed to trying to win and increase your rating. All that matters is that you get the invitations to the Grand Chess Tour so that you can guarantee yourself some amount of income every single year, which is also why I think with the Grand Chess Tour, so many games do end in draws because the only thing that matters is getting in that event. That matters. That's the only thing so that you can actually keep paying the bills over and over again. Um, and that, that's why I think it's a big problem with chess is because the incentives aren't there. And the, the only incentive is to get the invitations. So otherwise, you're playing these open tournaments where you don't get any money at all. Um, 
So uh, isn't Rex giving like 200K? Wesley does not live in St. Louis, uh, and I don't believe he's getting 200K. Uh, I'm pretty sure he's not, actually. But that's not really the point of what I'm saying, though. The point of what I'm saying is that the, the goal, ultimately, is to stay in the top 10 or top 15, as opposed to trying to get to, like, top 5 and taking big risks, where you could fall down to number 30, and then you get no invitations at all. And that's the biggest problem with chess, honestly, is that... Um, is that there's only money a, uh, there's only money a certain amount of tournaments and you have to make sure you always qualify in those tournaments. That's the only thing that matters at the end of the day. It doesn't matter who it is. And that's also why I think like my performances were so were so bad too, I would say uh, like in 2018, 2019, because it was more about like try to finish in the top half, but desperately try not to lose a lot of rating points. Really, really important so that you always qualify. Um, really, really important. Like I, I can just tell you like directly, like, I mean, I, I can open my Excel spreadsheets, but like if, if I open my Excel spreadsheets, of course, I'm, I'm, I'm not sharing my, my, my window, but like if I just go back, let me, let me go back. Um, let me, let me, let me, let me look at the, um, let me look at how much I made in the Grand Chess Tour. Okay, let me, let me do some math. Um, I, 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 hopefully I'm not showing this on screen. Good. I'm not showing my calculator. I'm just, I just opened a spreadsheet. So let me see. That's, uh, let me do the numbers, uh, 0.81 divided by, um, let me see, 0.2. Yeah, so actually I can just tell you guys. So like in, in 2018, uh, let me just close this. In, 20, in 2018, I'll, I'll tell you guys. In 2018, the amount, the, the amount of my money percentage-wise that came from uh, Grand Chester events was 38%. So 38% of my income came solely from the Grand from the uh from the grand chess tour now mind you like that's actually kind of low to be honest that's kind of low because like i had some sponsors other stuff going on but that's still 38 percent. so if you think about me not qualifying for the grand chess tour i would i would have made 38 percent less money the next year which is why you have to qualify for the grand chess tour every year which is why players like wesley are happy to draw and just stay in that range where they automatically qualify and they keep making it in so um it's not, it's not, it's not a joke. And I think that's one of the big problems that there's only money in a handful of events. So the players, it's more important to stay in that rating range, stay in that group of top 10 to 15 players, instead of taking big risks and trying to win. What about 2023? I didn't play in the grand chess tour in 2023 because I'm retired. So, um, yeah, there you go. Um, so, so it, it's, it's quite different, but, but the point still stands. Like if, if you think, if you think about like Wesley, Wesley is obviously a glare, glaring example, but it's more about making sure you qualify for the grand chess tour rather than um rather than trying to win events you just got to qualify so that next year you have that same income you got to keep that income flowing because otherwise you end up playing the opens like eric says and you're just completely broke so let's get back to the video and here we go um blah blah, blah. so but for the average like 2650 to 2700 which is top 50 top 40 it's like no what, those you, wait, here, wait, like, wait 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 a second. those of you guys who are asking it's uh it's qualification by rating it's qualification by rating which is why the rating is so important why players do not take risks in the grand chess tour because you just got a guarantee that you qualify for the grand chess tour the next year so that you can continue to pay the bills if you, if you multiply this and add it throughout the year it doesn't look very good and this is one of the nicest mm -hmm. opens. he's right out there so it's like how for me i just find it very hard to for it to make sense to be a professional player you're playing for experience playing for fun whatever mm -hmm. by all means but it's not even like a poker prize fund or something where the two thousand dollar entry it's like no this is like the prizes don't scale up that hard and it's all really good players and chess you know pretty yeah, pretty accurate true. results in terms of the elo rating it's it's not like this is offset by a lot of good tournaments exactly you know where gms come in and they make 10 20 30k yeah you don't paul jv says right but if you win one tournament you get over a million what tournament? <laughs> oh my god! Oh my god! Did I really just hear that? Good tournaments, <laughs> you know, where DMs come in and they make 10, 20, 30k. Right. Paul JB says, right, but if you win one tournament, you get over a million. <laughs> what tournament in chess can you win a million dollars in? The what, World what Championship. Are talking about? <laughs> what, some of the stuff I'm reading here is so far off. Somebody else was asking some other things too. Oh my God, this is you hilarious. Golf. Exactly. Like golf, you, well, golf, golf is well-funded and they have some viewership. Okay. I'm saying, what tournament can you even win 200,000 in? Right. So, right. I mean, other than, other than the candidates and the world championships, that's, those are literally the only events that you can make that much money. Now, to be fair, there is a $200,000 grand prize in the upcoming Chess Champions Tour being held in uh, Toronto in about three weeks. 
um but not nonetheless yeah like also this is a, it's golf is a very poor example because even if you can't make it as a as a pro player with your pga card you still can go teach at the country club and make 300k a year easily easily you can make 300k if you just if you're if you're like the the the, the, the club pro um and it's a very it's, it's very very nice it's like it's the whole thing is very hard but for me you know there's a certain age you're a young grandmaster you should play you're trying to get better the vast majority of players here that mm -hmm. didn't make money they're, they've been GMs for a while, yep. in their 20s and 30s. They're in their prime years for earning money. Yeah, and most of true. them don't have a chance of winning top 5 or top 10. You're here because you simply don't have other opportunities. Exactly. If true. you don't play Isle of Man and you just sit at home as a Grandmaster and you want to be a professional player like just playing, it's not like, oh, I'm going to go raid a tournament and win the $2,000 first prize against 2,000 rated players. It's not just sitting around. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it's... I think, I think it's only gotten worse in chess. Because there's only more and more grandmasters. And then you have to look at cost of living of where you're from because you can justify dollar amounts based on cost of living. But like mm -hmm. I'm talking about strong, strong grandmasters in this field. And I'm talking about very hard work. It's not a fun event. Like look at Shanklin. Like this, this is a good example. Like, you see Sam Shanklin here, number sixty one. This is a good example. Like very, very hard worker, like an extremely hard worker. Uh, I mean there are few people I know who work as hard as he does on chess. Um, and still finishes 61st. He makes zero dollars. I mean, they, these are not these are not like the these are not just like 2,500 GMs. These are like people who are really really strong, like top 50 in the world, who, who like work on chess nonstop. Every year, every two years, and Canada doesn't get paid. Even countries like Norway, they don't get paid at all. So you're mm -hmm. going for the love of your country, and you're also spending three weeks of your life just playing chess. And even then, lots of players don't play because it's hard for them to justify it. Yeah, true. But Wild Man is a really good example of how hard it is to play and how hard to justify losing two, three weeks of your life, playing good chess, not having a bad result, and your take-home pay is $0. It is mm -hmm. worse than anything you could do. And the upside, the upside is like, oh, you perform at a top 50 in the world level and you get $2,000. $2,000 for two, three weeks in a volatile <laughs> industry where you don't have that every month, you don't have that tournament every month. Right, we true. Can, we can even extrapolate that. If you play at that level every month, okay, fine. Make 40K a year, 35K a year. Yep maintaining that level if you, if you drop it right it that's out. it yeah, yeah and he's right and there because he says like that's if you maintain the level that you make that money if you don't maintain that level it, it can go down the there there is one thing though that i think eric is missing here which is the one thing that i, I think eric is missing and this is because eric actually i don't think ever really played in the leagues is that the way that most gms for like 25 50 to like 2600 actually make money is by playing in what we call the league so for example there's the german bundesliga there's like the uh Czech extra league. I think there's also the French team championship. There's also the Spanish. Um, there's like the, uh, I think there's a Spanish team championship. There are these league league events like Germany, Spain, France. Uh, I think Turkey also has one, if I'm not mistaken. So there are these league tournaments where people will play, play, say like over the course of the year, it's about like, let's just say 10 games to keep it as an even number. They play 10 games and a 25, 50 will probably make on average about like $500. So if you extrapolate that by like, um, uh, what is that? That's I, I said four leagues. So let's just say you play you play, play ten games uh, in four different leagues. That's still only twenty thousand dollars. So if you're getting paid five five hundred dollars a game and you play ten games in say like the French league, the German league, uh, the Spanish league, um, like and like the Turkish league. So that's like four different leagues. But that is actually how a lot of like the twenty five fifty players ish twenty six hundred ish do make a living within Europe. It's just by playing playing in these league these league events in like Spain, Germany, France, uh, Turkey, et cetera. I do believe like I have played in some of the leagues. Um, what I do know is that the hotel is always covered. So your hotel is always covered. Usually for the Europeans, it's, it's fine because traveling within Europe is very cheap. Eric, of course, is unlucky just like I am, which is that as everybody in chat knows, if you're, if you're within Europe and you travel to somewhere like five hours away within Europe or six hours away, it's still relatively cheap. Whereas anytime you have to cross the pond uh, from Canada or from the U.S. to go to Europe, it's like, Price is always like 3x what it is traveling within Europe, even if the distance might be the same on an airplane. Um, it's, it's always cheaper traveling within Europe than it is like going from like the US to Germany or London or wherever or Canada to, or I mean, Toronto or Montreal to the same place. So that that is important to note, though, is that he, I, I think he like, I don't know if he talks about it, but he is, I think, missing that point. Um, and you can take trains in Europe. True. Limited years holding that title in the first place. So it's hard for me it's 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 hard for me mm -hmm. to, to justify and to look at and when i talk to some players they're like i mean they don't know what else to do they spend so much of the year getting so much of their life getting good at chess that's mm -hmm. all they know but like well that's the other problem too that eric Ra eric raised here which has to be mentioned is that like the problem with chess honestly is that 
in order to get like they're, they're probably as a kid you can do it up to like 14 15 15 16 ish i would say but the problem is if, you, if you're like a gm and you're 20 you're like 25 50 at, at 16 for example which is pretty good i mean it's not like super 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 wonder wonder kind or whatever whatever but it's still very very good you have to make a decision there where it's like you just drop chess all together and focus on school or you basically go all in on chess and you spend like three four years on it and by that point it's already too late generally to go back to school and like completely switch because you spent all your time on chess so that's actually the other other thing that's really really tough is that there's a point where like 15 16 where you have to make that decision and if you go all in on chess and you, you get stuck in the 2600 range generally it's too late to go back and like and, and change you can't just go and easily change curve people can do it obviously but it's very very difficult you actually it's actually pretty sad this isn't that dissimilar to other sports though no no it's it's the, this this the, the difference with chess and and, and other sports there's, there's different tiers of sports. The sports have monetized better than chess. Chess still hasn't monetized over the board events where the top players provide exciting games, tournaments are able to increase the prize fund, mm -hmm. and everything, you know, everything rises. There's some Olympic sports where this is similar to, for sure. And I'm not saying the prizes should go up because money doesn't grow, grow on trees. Mm -hmm. But for me, as a logical numbers person, when I was like 22 years old, which is mm -hmm. when I quit chess, I only played two years full time, I'm like, it's only getting harder and I don't even see the upside. Like it's a very stressful life. Yes, it is. Um, and so, but like I could have played this year. Apparently I could email them. There's still some spots and I did play a few years ago, but it's like, if I'm playing, it's just cause I want to play top players and try to get better at chess. The only reason that I can afford to take two or three weeks of my life away to do that is because of the, the business I've built and you mm -hmm. know, worked many years of my life for. Yes. But if I was in someone else's shoes, like I would be really rough. I would, it would affect my, my mentality. Of course it would. Yes. Um, also, that's the other problem with chess is that like, if that's, if that's what happens and you lose a game early in the tournament, for example, like I just speaking as, as like from the pro chess player perspective, if you lose a game early in the tournament, you basically, you, you go, you lose like some six hour game to like another guy who's really good. And you're like, F this, F that. Why am I playing chess? Like your, your mindset is always very, very negative from the very get go. And that, that's the other big thing that I think a lot of people don't understand about chess is that like, you're very, very negative. It's very, it's very easy to go spiraling and then you spiral out of control, lose, lose some more games, lose some points. They're just like, why, why did I waste my life on this stupid, stupid board game? Yalta says, I think these are all just accusations that we can't have, sure have an answer, but I play professional chess. I'm telling mm -hmm. you from experience. Like I've played these events, I'm a 2600 plus GM. And I employ some of the top players in the world, even on our professional chess teams. So I'm very involved in chess economics on in every stage, as a player, as a manager. I've played some of the nicer events I've been lucky to be invited to. Also, I, I, I have to say I find this part very funny as well. Um, because, because like, I, I kind of, like, I agree with Eric. One of the hardest things in streaming, specifically chess-related, is, like, how like how like eric is basically there are people in chat who are like questioning Eric. they're like you don't know what you're talking about you don't know this you don't know that i mean obviously i deal with the same thing but the thing is like when you've spent your whole life in chess when you've been around like the top players you've played turns professionally you've seen the economics of it all like you do know what you're talking about and it's like when he's talking there's like you don't know what you're talking about it's 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 tough to see so well, you know i've been on the lucky end of things as well but this is one of the nice i know better chess. yes and yeah it's just sad because like I know the I know the players. I talk you talk to them, and it's like you have a limited time to play, and you're playing your ass off. And there's no like ATP tour or mm -hmm. minor league system or whatever it is. It's like there's no there's no structure. There's no consistency. There's only the grand that's chess tour. That's it. Talk about afterwards. That's the only thing. There's only the grand chess tour, and it only applies to roughly the top twenty ish players in the world. That's that that is the ATP tour. It's a series of like four or five events, but it only applies to top twenty players, and that's it. And after that um it doesn't trickle down as if we're if, we're, if i want to use like trickle down economics as a, as a comparison it doesn't trickle down but like it's extremely stressful when you literally this is an event where your costs are covered mm -hmm. right that's going to tie into the next thing i'm going to talk about but this is one of the nicer events at least you're not losing money there's many cases where you lose money and you play mm -hmm. and you might play really well but it just doesn't make sense so you might be wondering well why do some people do it um uh, a lot of chess players don't know what what else to do a lot of them like the True. lifestyle they have they don't make a lot they get to be the bosses mm -hmm. and a lot of it is a discrepancy in countries where you're from india there's a lot of there's a bit of funding for players at least flights there's a program where the, where the government partners with mm -hmm. com national companies oil companies etc and they employ grandmasters and give them a minimum salary every month um, True. you can do that so that's only certain countries uzbekistan funds chess mm -hmm. while most people aren't from uzbekistan there's you know the former soviet union countries have some state money 
True. That applies to very few people, and that's not something you can guarantee. That's like politics. That's some guy in the government or some whatever. Mm-hmm. Legacy from the Soviet Union was like, okay, let's put a bit of money into chess. Even though our country has a very low cost of living, uh, can't afford to raise it, there's not even a necessarily a democratic process happening in those countries, but let's just toss a lot of money towards chess, even though there's not going to be a huge return. For some countries, there is a return. Uzbekistan is really good at chess now. You can tie that into national pride, culture, etc. And sometimes <laughs> it's just like poor countries being even poorer. Uh, that, that was a little bit out there, but hey. <laughs> so, this is just me ranting. Because I was like, well, I mean, I could have played. I don't Eric's got to move to Uzbekistan. Just got to move to Uzbekistan and learn the social. language. It doesn't have to be. And the upside is just not very, very attractive. Um, and I'm speaking from the perspective of somebody who's just trying to play professionally, not like an influencer or something. Yeah, I've been at one and a half speed, you, know, you guys. It's very hard to do both. Very few people. The car was really the exception, not the norm. Mm-hmm, true. So yeah, that's Isle of Man. That's one of the nicest events. Really, really, most people are losing money. Three weeks of work, two to three weeks of work with no pay. Yeah, is a reality for two thirds of the field for one of the toughest events in history. True. That's gonna be a reality. True. It's gonna be a reality every time they run the event. True. So it ties in. You know, he's right. People ask, why do title players cheat on Chess.com? Why are there cheaters and people risk their reputation? Well, you could spend three weeks of your life working hard to try to get two thousand dollars every single day, twelve hours of chess, ten hours of chess. Or you could try to figure out a way to cheat and potentially win one thousand dollars <laughs> at home without any traveling. I, I did not know this was going to be in here. Win okay, three hundred dollars <laughs> because like, and, and I'm talking about top like the average grandmaster is nowhere near winning a prize of two thousand dollars. They play this again. Most of the people who came home with nothing after two three weeks of work, those are top one hundred grandmasters, top two hundred grandmasters. They are in the top ten percent of GMs. Top ten percent take home pay would be zero, and there's the other ninety percent of GMs. So we're talking about already the very best players getting nothing. And then the other 90% yeah. of GMs, and then there's IMs and FMs, and we don't want to talk about CMs, and et cetera, but like zero prospects. I'm not saying, they, I don't believe in like that everyone should be paid or whatever. It's not, yeah, it's not communist Russia. Uh, but it also surprises me sometimes when I see players continue to play when the conditions only get worse. Everyone knows competition in chess has gone up. Players mm-hmm. have gotten stronger, technology has gotten better, kids are playing more, and kids aren't playing for money when they start out. Um, so. You, you know, in other sports, you don't really have 14-year-olds taking your job. You might go back to sports a little bit, but even in sports, it's mainly adults. But in chess, that's going to happen because they don't need to play for money yet. You heard it here first, you guys. You, you heard it here first. It's all, it's, all those, it's all those 14-year-old Indian kids taking your jobs away, right? That's what he's saying. Um, so now there's a huge influx. Chess has gotten harder, so you have to study more to maintain your level. Kind of like solvers in poker. You got you to gotta study more to maintain your level. But the prizes are going down. And there's more competitors, more people competing mm-hmm. for the same pot. He's right, actually. He is right. Um, so yeah, it's it's just hard for me to like. I feel bad. Mm-hmm. I, I feel bad when I when I see the games. I enjoy it, whatever. But for 90 percent of the players, it's rough. It's rough. He's right. So chessable has been, you know, things like chessable have been nice for players <laughs> because they're training these openings anyways for these events. They're not going to give away all their secrets. They don't have to relearn these things. They can kind of make these courses and try to play events, get some bit of income on a regular basis true um, but not most players there aren't doing chessable some are and that's smart that's a new thing mm-hmm. so yeah i it just blows my mind honestly i i actually just blows my mind i don't know other vast maniac thanks for the subs i don't know why people play the events i don't because it they just, don't have anything else to do it that's doesn't why. work with my head personally it doesn't it, yeah so i mean that's that's pretty much it but i i kind of i kind of agree why don't other gms open up about this i've seen a car point this out well i mean i think the thing is a lot of people haven't built a platform and i, I think i think if we go if we if we look um if we look going forward um it's really really important the players start to think more outside the box because i don't think that it's going to change like the funding for tournaments is not going to change the way that you make money in chess is sort of by building a brand and focusing on social media maybe doing chessable courses a youtube channel these sorts of things streaming maybe maybe not depends but um the prizes are never going to increase that much and if they do increase it's going to increase at the very top and it's not going to hit the players in the 25 50 to like 26 50 range is what i would say you can teach of course um the problem with teaching generally is that it's almost impossible to teach players, teach kids specifically who are a little bit weaker. Um, but, I mean, I would say beginner kids who are beginners and then play at the same high level. It's really not possible um, is, is what I would say is that at the end of the day, it's not it's not realistic to try and teach full time and then play at a high level. And I'll give you a good example of this, actually. Um, 
Uh, there, there's a there's the one, the one of the best uh, female American players in the United States is is Irina Crush, and she's been like the eight I think eight or seven eight time U.S. Women's Champion, like very very good player. Very I think I think she's a GM if I'm not mistaken. She's been over 2,500, very 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 strong, top 20, top 30 ish on and off. Um, I think amongst women in the world, and she actually teaches chess all the time. She teaches chess in, in New York uh, all the time. And as we've seen over the last couple of years with her teaching more and more, her actual performance like in the U.S. Women's Championship and just the quality of her games, which I've seen, has gone down significantly. I think that's directly attributable to her teaching. The, I, I think it's directly attributable to her teaching so much um, to, uh, to kids. And I, th I, think that's the, I think that's the thing is that like at the end of the day, a lot of people do teach. When they start teaching, you have to give up on, um, you, you have to give up on, uh, on playing because you just can't do it. You just can't do it. That, that, that's what I would say um, in general terms. So let's get back to the, the games. Uh, let me try and get my rating up some more as well. But let's, let's change the scene um, and keep going. But it's very, very, very good video. Very, very, actually a very good video.